Today is the greatest day of my life. That's also the wrong record, but it doesn't matter because might as well will be. I'm about to listen to the two-hour beast that is melancholy and the infinite sadness. And I'm not gonna make you wait any longer, so let's go for it. This is new. From the top, they are changing everything. Oh my god, this is so beautiful and so cozy. It's like a hug from your mother before you go to sleep. Oh my god, every time they modulate, they do it so subtly, but they do it and it truly changes a lot. Beautiful tune to start with. Gonna let it run. Despite it's not a transition, I just couldn't cut it. I like the anticipation those drums and that bass create right here. Oh my god. This resolution makes me feel like I'm flying. That's beautiful. Yes. Here's the man of the hour. I believe. How could I not? All of the drumming. It's not complex or anything, but it's so tight. Perfect for the song. going to be an ending like that. What a song. And what a song. Okay, they haven't forget their heaviest side. Oh my god. I'm back in the Gish era. Let's turn up the volume. That's better. There are like 15 guitars here easily. What the fuck? Oh my! Oh my! Oh god! Oh god, no, this is the kind of stuff I expected! Oh god, that was an orgasm right there! <laughs> I don't even know what to say anymore, it's just a fourth song. Why? Oh, Dustin. Those lyrics. What Billy is doing here lyrically exceeded all of my expectations. The way he entwines the words, the rhymes, the internal rhymes, everything here is just so well thought of. <laughs> right. I don't even know what to say, I'm just... This is not standard tuning. And if it is, how? I'm loving that rhythm. I love when the rhythm guitar takes the lead. All in all, the thing I love the most about this song is how relaxing and tender it is underneath. Right there at the end, I paid good attention to the lyrics and I got caught up. Every single song so far is freaking masterpiece of their own. The world is a vampire. God damn, where was this my whole life? Oh my god, 
by far the deepest song on the record. Should have known from the title this was going to be more than just a trip of emotions. I know why this is a perfect curse now. Everything about it is pure anger. Ah, uh, they are losing it again. I'm loving the biblical references here. Jesus, Job. Curse. I hadn't realized how good that guitar work is. You see why it's important to listen to those parts clean? You cannot just end a song so powerful like that. But okay, we're into the next one. And that's also a beautiful guitar work. I'm not sure what I should say about this song. I'm still blown away by everything before it because that's what happens when you have such a record those strings again they build such atmosphere songs like this are meant to be simply enjoyed it's kind of hard for me to comment on some songs that are so soothing and that I do want to say more but at the same time what I want is just listen lucky me this will be pure and raw noise that guitar is like a helicopter about to take off I think I know that guitar riff from somewhere. <laughs> of course, the Danny Phantom theme song. Really? Have they ever played that whole melancholy life? That would be just pure chaos. Where do they get these dynamics from? Now, that instrumentation is freaking crazy, but Billy's lyrics here are so freaking real. Just hear that pain on his voice. Oh my. I love the chemistry of this band. So far, song after song, it truly feels like a band, you know? My god, is that the bass? Okay... <laughs> I'm not sure if it was Nine Inch Nails who took influence from them or otherwise, because... <laughs> Listen to those drums, I don't know how this song isn't clipping, it's pretty well mixed, mixing like this requires some serious skills. But holy damn. <laughs> I love how underneath all that distortion and saturation, it's still a pop song. Oh god. Billy's voice itself is pretty high and nasal. And now with this filter... Jesus. They melted the transistors of the amp to do that. But I love the glimpses of the Jesus and Mary Chain and other shoegaze bands. I don't care if you think they are not a shoegaze band, they are for me. They are so saturated, they sound like a naked beat track from a video game. Yeah. <laughs> Little spunk right there at the end. Wow. 
what the, the mysticism this song evokes. It's truly like entering to heaven. I love that motif in the arm. It's eerie, magnificent, magical, beautiful, all at the same time. But right now, it's just magical. Okay, but maybe those lyrics are darker than I thought. That was kinda short, but the atmosphere, man, every single song has its atmosphere, but this one, it has something else. It's like a little fairy tale world. And the beauty continues. It's like Billy's trying to revisit his childhood, to build it again, and he does it through this little world he creates. I also love how they seem to go from a tender lullaby to alternative rock. They are slowly exchanging the guitars for the strings and I freaking love it. But I love that the guitars are still there. I'm so in love with the feeling this song evokes. It's also making me feel like a child again. It's like every single song on this record had a very different mixing and mastering. I don't know what it is, the dynamics, the guitars, the feeling, but something tells me this would have been an excellent song in Siamese Dream. I'm sorry I didn't say that much, I just wanted to enjoy this one and hell if I did. Holy damn, a nine minute song. Alright, let's go for it. Well, so far it's just silence, unless something is very slowly building up. Yeah, something is very, very slowly building up. It's like we're entering another realm that consists of pure oceans. Some songs right here feel like floating in space, maybe like flying, but this one feels like sailing. Just listen to those symbols. It's obvious they resemble waves. But then again, that guitar right there, it's like the wind. Except we now crashed into shore. I love how they throw the most uplifting instrumentals while Billy singing some of the harshest stuff ever. And now these little sections that really make you feel out of this world. Is Porcelina a girl or like porcelain? Something tells me this song was going to be much shorter. But Billy kept writing and writing and writing and when they got the final version, they decided if they could anything, it simply would be incomplete. Just now I'm realizing it's fading out. This is one of those super long songs that you don't feel passing. The time simply stops when you listen to it. And good news is, we still got one more to go. So, let's go to Take Me Down. Getting heavy daydream vibes. Oh my god, is Darcy gonna sing? That's definitely not Darcy, but that's also definitely not Billy. 
There she is. I guess one of the advantages of releasing such a long record is that every band member can have their own songs on it. resolution just a couple of seconds left but you know what this concludes the first city of the record and i think i'm gonna stop right here for today because i've been here for about an hour my back hurts a little and i gotta digest what i just heard i got the feeling if i just jump straight into where boys fear to tread and I continue to this to do this, I will miss a lot of things. So I'm gonna take a break and continue tomorrow with part two. But for you, it will be a matter of seconds, so let's go for it. Hell yeah. Beautiful palm muting. Oh my God, this is gonna be a mess, but the kind I like. <laughs> Holy damn. I'm not saying that much about this one. I'm so mesmerized by those guitars. They are so wasted. It's almost down. Or maybe not. What the? <laughs> they just cut it right there? All right. We're into bodies. Although it's just interference, kinda reminds me to the beginning of Breathe by Nirvana. But never mind, this is a whole other thing. This riff, it's very powerful, but for emotional reasons. And with that melody even more. Sometimes I forget Billy can do that. Hey, I don't know if they intended this to sound like a road trip, but so far that's the feeling I'm getting from this second part. It doesn't sound like pretty much anything I think I've heard so far, but it has that familiar feeling. Maybe because of those intervals, maybe because it's the Smashing Pumpkins, but... I truly feel like there could be a connection here. And it's done. But we're into 33. And the road trip continues. Okay, maybe this is a pit stop. Yeah, I think this song is about Jesus Christ. I don't know, but so far this record is filled with symbolism of all kind. I don't think it's a concept album beyond the concept of melancholy of who she is, but some parts really feel connected to other parts, thematically, I mean. It's almost done. I also got a Hawaii feeling on this one. It feels like when you're sunbathing, feeling the breeze, just being at the beach, I don't know, quite like that. Talking about Deftones, this is giving me a When Girls Telephone Boys vibe. I don't think it's gonna be that crazy, but we'll see. Oh boy, for a moment I forgot, I am in a road trip. That first note was so low, I didn't know if it was Billy. Just now I'm realizing, this is like, taken straight from Pisces is Carrier. It sounds like, with that kind of mysticism. Oh, those subtle low notes by Billy really show his vocal range.
almost done. Doesn't seem like it's going to be a transition, but I'm gonna let it run because according to my favorite Smashing Pumpkin song. I've known this for years and I freaking love it. How couldn't you with that feeling kicking in from the top? Magic of Darcy. Could have been released any year, still sound as magical. This riff right here was a kickstart for the sound of almost every 2000s indie band. I can help but just enjoy this one when it's playing. By the way, what are those drums at the end and the beginning? They sound sampled, or maybe they're just equalized very, I don't know, weirdly with a lot of moodiness. Who knows, but what are those drums? I've always been intrigued by that. Really? Now I'm thinking about Interpol. That intro was the same exact one as Say Hello to the Angels. Oh, they're trashing it. <laughs> well, at least the voice is in the background, or kinda. If this would be a little closer, it would count as zero rate. Sometimes I'm not even sure anymore if that's a guitar. <laughs> Somebody just said boom into the microphone. Real close. Oh, that's all. That's like a detuned pianola. Oh, but this guitar work, it already sold me the song. How did we get from the Wild West to take off in a rocket ship? Jesus! Yeah, those drums! Deftones also wasn't here but was influenced by them. Those are the same drums that in change. I don't know who Ruby is, but she must be proud. This is the essence of rock. Your downstrokes, a single note, but all the energy in the world. Those guitars are so loud, I barely noticed the bass until now. But what an atmosphere it evokes. I think this is going to be pure ambience until it ends, and I wouldn't have it any other way. No, it's not a transition. There are only three elements here, but it sounds as full as with all those overdubs. Oh, it's a reprise for melancholy. It's almost done. I'm gonna let it fade out. There we go. Mom's in the bathroom, shaking out the goose tea. Check it up, Juvie said, sure, heart alive. I want to say so many things, but I want to listen mostly. That's my big dilemma with this record. One thing I do have to say, though, is I think I'd rather these acoustic tunes. They give me such peace. I love the atmosphere they create, even though it's just Billy and a guitar and a couple more other things here and there. But that's the magic of it. You don't need a lot of overdubs to create something magical that resonates with people. Back to that heaviness. Oh my god, let me add it right now. God, Billy's vocals on this one are even unhealthy. Oh Jesus, man. Jesus, this is trauma in the form of sound. I can hear Slipknot being directly influenced by this song. We have 
a breakdown? Yeah, we do! That was nursery rhyme, so... Jesus! Oh, and they are getting faster. Oh my god! Oh my god, what the hell? Literally, what the hell? This ain't even Tritons anymore, this is just suffering. That's it? That's it? Oh my god. I'm surprised of how unconnected some songs are. No, seriously. I just heard a 7 minute pure metal masterpiece. What is this? For some reason I'm getting the feeling Ringo Starr was involved in the making of this song. You know the weirdest part? I don't even find it soothing. I find it ominous. That chord right there sounds like the beginning of A Clockwork Orange. Who knows, maybe this is how Alex the Large lived through his childhood. But it's fading out. And not gonna lie, that wasn't my favorite at all. It was really, really weird for a song. And well, the place where it is, I don't know, something just doesn't quite add up for me with that one. And the weirdness continues. No, really, that production, it's so poppy. Oh my. Sounds like every 2000s mainstream love song. Now these are the pumpkins I know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure up to this point they are just experimenting. And a fade out, of course. Still not gonna lie, this really confused me. These last two songs, I hope the other three that remain are not like this because it starts to feel like they are lacking a direction here but it's a 28 song record that had to happen at some point i'm just glad i'm barely noticing it right now almost at the end of the record it really speaks of how strong this has been so far but i'll save all comments about it for the review in the meantime let's go to the next one That's an electronic hi-hat. And more Beatleish influence. Although the title is very naive, I'm not surprised it sounds like this. It's not what I was expecting, but I'm liking this one. Loving this melody is so tender. All right, a little modulation. <laughs> they kind of let it die right there at the end, but that was a beautiful resolution. Is it playing? Oh, it's fading in slowly. Now I know Muse is also a fan of the Smashing Pumpkins. The drums sound a little drowned, but who cares? Maybe all these songs are really connected. I don't know, but there's closure ahead. I'm loving the feeling that her progression and that guitar tone are giving me. Darcy is also killing it on the bass. No oh boy, there's only one more to go. I don't know why, but I'm feeling kind of anxious. I don't really want to go to it. 
because it's the last one and I've been here forever listening to this record. Sometimes it does feel endless, but it does have an end and it's called Farewell and Good Night. This will be beautiful, I can already tell you that. Lost on the music. That's not really. Oh, yeah. oh my god! Everyone singing on this song! Yes, it feels like the ending of a trip. And what an ending! And what a trip! but mostly I just want to listen I'm so in love with that modulation that right there so bright can't believe how much that piano does it for me is it me or is it merging into melancholy I think it's doing it oh now it's fading out man I feel like I lost something and left behind a stage of my life I don't think one could be the same just like that after listening to it so now imagine how the pumpkins would feel after listening to this finished and ready for release I guess that's how this one feels like knowing your life will never be the same after it but let's talk a little further about it in the review oh so much to talk about and i don't even know where i should start guess i will by saying i got a lot of comments telling me melancholy would be like this or like that but at the end, none of them were close to my actual experience. Although this record has a lot of nuances and it's one of the most complete pieces of work I've ever heard, actually going through it, it's something only you can define for yourself. So I can only share with you how it's been like for me. This is not a record I can appreciate in just one seat, but neither I have to take it in one seat to appreciate it. I think that's part of its appeal, how I can either set the time and place to connect with it or I can just listen to a track now and then without losing the thread. And for a double album, that's pretty impressive. The songs here are strong enough to deliver both individually and within the record. And I think that's due to the grandiosity behind it. From the top, we start with an instrumental that tells us, hey, this right here will be different. And hell if it is. The part that caught my attention the most is the orchestration, because it's not the first time we hear it, but it is the first time it feels like it belongs to the record as if it was another band member. The strings here will make you fly, sail, dream, and feel countless emotion, but don't you think for a second that because of it the punkings forget who they are. The guitars here are still the main focus, but they also make room for everything else to have a little bit of that protagonism. Talking about protagonism, I love how everyone in the band is more involved than ever on this record. It feels like every member left its essence on it, not just Billy. And of course, I loved hearing James, Jimmy, Billy and Darcy singing together in Farewell and Good Night. I wish they would do this more often. However, not everything here is equally good and cohesive. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of thrown off by how in such a long record there are only five singles, one of which I would never imagine it was a single. Going even further, I divided the songs into tiers depending on how strong they are for me in terms of composition and production. On tier one we got most of the singles, Tonight Tonight, Zero, Bullet with Butterfly Wings, and 1979. On tier two we got the heavy hitters like XYU and the most atmospheric stuff like Porcelina. Songs that could have been singles but were either too long or too heavy for the mainstream back then. On tier 3 we got, and let's not lie to ourselves, the fillers. Songs like We Only Come Out At Night and Beautiful are there because 
I don't know, it's a double record. And speaking about it, I think its length sometimes can play against it. There are so many songs here, it often feels like they don't belong in the same record, and it's really difficult to find a connection between some of them. I read Billy didn't want to work with Butch Vig anymore because that would be repeating the same formula and he wanted to break the mold. So they booked a studio where they could record simultaneously and later expand with overdubs and orchestration. And on top of that, Billy also wanted to approach this record as if it was the last one they would ever make and take it to the levels of the White Album and The Wall. The problem with all this is that sometimes it feels the ambition behind Melancholy was so big that the band started to lose control over the quality of the music. The production of Melancholy strongly disagrees with itself, there are many mixing inconsistencies and there's this thing where the acoustic songs are louder than the faster and heavier ones. I understand when you create something so loud sometimes it clips and you have to turn down the volume, or maybe the engineers just thought it was too much. I don't know, but for me, rock is loud, acoustic is tender, and there is no need to move those around. It surprises me though that in spite of that, when I compare the ratio of songs I like disliked from Melancholy to the ones in the White Album and The Wall, two records I consider technically superior, Melancholy beats them both by far. You may think it's because alternative rock is my thing, or because my generation is closer to Melancholy than the other two records, but no. The songs on Melancholy speak to me, both musically and lyrically. That doesn't have a year or a genre, and at the end of the day, it's far more important than any technical aspect. I guess what I'm trying to say is, Melancholy isn't perfect, but it would be negligence not to recognize it as the masterpiece it is. When you listen to it, whether you like it or not, you're in for a ride. Just be careful, because it might as well will be the ride of your life. I added 20 songs to my library, so Melancholy is for me a 20 out of 28, and I would love to have it on vinyl, but I guess I'll have to wait for the next repress whenever that happens. But so, that was my reaction slash review of Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness by the Smashing Pumpkins. Tell me, what do you think about this record? Don't forget to leave it in the comments. If you like what you see, please consider supporting the channel with a donation of any kind, maybe in the fashion of a tip. In the description, you'll find a link where you can donate through PayPal, as well as my social media, in case you want us to stay more connected. And so, that was all for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Tony Whitburn, and I'll see you in the next one.